So further ado, here we go, Ed and Leslie Rosenberg, volunteers from the Bobsledge Community Forest Project. Welcome. Hello, how are you guys? Hopefully good. 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 Ed's going to uh, speak to you a little bit in the beginning, and then I will come in after him. Hi, I'm Ed, Ed Rosenberg. I'm on the Woodstock Conservation Commission. I've been on the commission for a little over 10 years, and Buck's Ledge has been kind of at the forefront for that whole time on looking at how we might be able to acquire it and permanently protect it. Uh, things that we've gotten used to uh, using bucks because the paper companies many years ago allowed people to hunt and to access the land. And uh, one of the things that became apparent was that uh, that might not always be the case. The land got sold about 12 or 13 years ago to a forest management company. And uh, there was no guarantee that we'd be able to continue to, to use it. Uh, we had agreements with the forest management company to be able to build trails on the land. And um, we've been good stewards of the land uh, during that time frame. But with all of the people that are discovering our area and wanting to move up here or have second homes or permanently live here, it's put a lot of pressure on um, large tracts of land like this to be uh, developed. And so in order to ensure uh, continued use of, of bucks and enjoyment of bucks, we felt it needed to be acquired and permanently protected. So. And my part in this is um, I am a very visual person. Um, I am a, a painter, have been doing art all my life. I can't even remember when I wasn't. Uh, and uh, we look at uh, Buck's Ledge from the other side. We live on a ledge that is on the opposite side of where you would be hiking at Buck's Ledge. So we, we've we always loved it and, uh, and I find it visually stimulating. I've done lots of painting, but I did um, a couple of years ago, I, I woke up one morning, it's early January, so cold outside, probably like 11 degrees. And uh, I looked out my, my my window and I said, oh my goodness, look at look at what I see. So Ed got up and took a picture of it. It is a moonset sunrise. So the moon is on, and on the in the distance, as I'm looking at it, the sun was coming up behind me. And what happened with all the snow uh, in certain layers, it colored it different ways. You see the kind of the pink light and then you see the light blue and then a little darker with some light and then getting very dark where it was in shadow. And that's, ex that's really the way it looked, which was astounding. So uh, that, that's kind of the work I do, but, but I am particularly excited to uh, see what you choose to do in terms of your images on perhaps a, t a tile that will be put together, everybody do a tile, we'll make a mosaic and have it permanently framed so it's weatherproof and it will be there as a welcome for everybody who comes to hike box ledge. And um, I, I, would, I would intend for it to be there for many, many years, maybe so long that if you guys have children, you might bring them there and say, ah, oh, I did that way back when. So uh, there's a lot of meaning to that. Um, and uh, I'm just uh, looking forward to see what you're going to do. Uh, I have no, no goals for spe specifics of anything. Um, I think it's going to be small, whether it be part of the landscape you choose or a symbol you choose, or I have, I have no idea, but you guys are so creative. I know you're, you're gonna produce gorgeous things. So one of the, some news that I'd like to share with you is this past week, we learned that uh, a grant that we had applied for from the state of Maine is called Lands for Maine's Future. Uh, we received this grant, the full amount requested, which was three, $307,500. So that was a, uh, about 50% of the cost of the 
acquiring the land itself. And we've also uh, been doing local fundraising for the last three months, and we've raised $132,000 towards our $175,000 uh, local fundraising goal, which is money that you have to raise to match these uh, state and federal grants. So we made great progress. Uh, we're so happy to get you guys involved right now. We're working uh, with the Nor Northern uh, Forest Center uh, monthly with meetings on planning the use of Bucks Ledge. And we need your input as to what you think we should preserve and why. And uh, so that will go into eventually into a document called a conservation easement and part of it that and, and which is supported by a forestry plan about the kind of forest and what we want to protect in that forest, the kind of forest we want to have. And some of the concepts that we're exploring is that of an old growth forest that is um, also um, what what uh, that looks at what habitat we're trying to uh, protect and, and attract, as well as uh, rare and endangered uh, plant species and um, old growth forest. So, which would be the way to maximize the carbon absorption of the forest. So, climate change and climate climate resilience is a, an important element of planning for. Uh, the forest of the future. So uh, we're right at the very beginning and uh, we need your kinds of inputs to see what is it you want to see in the future. So thank you. Hey, all right, you guys have Speaker some questions? We have, we have a list of questions we are ready to ask and you guys can take it away, okay? So our first, question we were wondering is like what motivated you like why why is this so important to you specifically great question it's uh and it definitely is a lot of motivation um because uh one you saw those pictures the most of them that if you have if you don't recognize the ones then you most most likely uh, recognize buck sledge from route 26 and going around north pond we live on the other side of Buck Sledge, and those images that I took are from where we live. And so we get to see that every day. And we love the beauty of where we live and what, and we have basically similar views to Buck Sledge. So we think it should be protected and allow access for the public now and into the future, just as it always has been. And, uh, and sharing in that, that beauty of, uh, and sense of place that we have that's uh, part of the town of Woodstock, part of our identity in the town of Woodstock. So that kind of follows into the other part of that question. Is it, you kind of started to answer it, but is it really personal to you or is it just because you love the area? It's well, it's both. I grew up here. I grew up in a little section of Woodstock called Pinhook and uh, and went to school all the way through high school in Woodstock. I was in the last graduating class of Woodstock High School. So, and then everybody started going from Woodstock to Telstar. And uh, so I've, I have deep roots here. My family all still lives here and, uh, and around here. So um, it is personal and it is uh, an appreciation because I was away for about 22 years in the Coast Guard and involved in environmental response, environmental protection, and uh, responding to oil spills and trying to prevent oil spills from happening and, and got to work on some of the largest uh, environmental uh, crisis that we've ever seen. So uh, to come back here, I felt it is important to kind of look around and really appreciate what's here and not take it for granted and to say, okay, what can we do to make sure that future generations get to enjoy this? Well, thank you for your service. Oh, well, mm -hmm. thank you. So, the, Coast Guard, uh, the Coast Guard is a great career because 
if you want to protect the environment, there's probably no job that's more rewarding <laughs> that's than doing than doing that kind of work. Mm -hmm. And and I got to work with people that did uh, seabird rescue, and uh, so you meet so many interesting people and scientists and from NOAA. Uh, it's just a, a, a mind-boggling uh, opportunity. And uh, so um, the Coast Guard is a, is a great uh, organization, humanitarian organization. So um, how do you decide what to do on your team? Do you have like a team leader or do you have everybody vote on what to do or is it like a system? That's a great question. Uh, I'm, I was asked to be the leader uh, of uh, trying to acquire the Buck Sledge. And there are other members of the Conservation Commission that uh, have roles. We have two people that are uh, in charge of fundraising, but I'm still on the fundraising committee, but I'm not the leader of that. And then we have uh, Marcel Pollock, who's also the uh, in leading the efforts for these grants that both uh, state and federal and private grants. And so he takes the lead in, on those and wrote the grant for Lands for Maine Future. And uh, then we have other people that are involved with trails. And as you saw in that video, we have a volunteer, Jurgen and uh, Marx and his wife, uh, they laid out the trails and cut the trails like to the forest school. So we call him the trail master. And, uh, and he's always looking for volunteers for uh, helping uh, uh, maintain the trails and certainly the new trail from the forest school, the forest to the school. Uh, next year will be some opportunities for raking the trails to get rid of the small limbs and things that people could trip on. Will there be any signs with like braille? Cause I know multiple people who aren't able to see. So is it gonna be like, gonna be for everyone like for braille and stuff like that or is it going to be specifically just hike it if you can find it no that's a good question <laughs> i like the way you put that yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah right at that installation where we're going to enter you go into the parking lot and there's already a kiosk there it'll be added on to and your whatever you create for art will be on that on that piece and part of it will be uh in that vicinity will be um, directions for a trail, what we call a trail for all. And um, certainly there'll be braille on that trail, on that trail marker, but also there'll be QR codes like you saw at the end of that video that will take you to information about what you're interested in. Meaning, you know, so, you know, you can, um, once you get to that page, you can do it with voice commands, uh, but you'd be able to get more information about uh, um, it could be a plant or a trail or history of Bucks Ledge and uh, that logging road that goes from the parking lot through the middle of the property. We're looking at it improving it so that wheelchair, there'd be wheelchair access and someone would be able to, um, who's limited to say that mobility of having to use a, a wheelchair, would be able to go up to an area, wouldn't be able to go all the way to the ledge, the top of the ledge, but to a high area where they could uh, overlook uh, North Pond and look at Mount Washington, the presidential range out in the distance or have a sensory kind of thing of uh, what's there. So um, uh, we wanna explore all of our senses. And I think that would be the trail to do, one of the trails to do it on and uh, certainly like your idea of uh, having it with Braille. Um, are there other things you are planning to do or like ideas that you have to welcome everybody and make everyone feel included at Bug Sledge? Well, I think the Trail for All is, the, is a, uh, something that uh, we're becoming more and more aware of. Um, we have some people from Maine Adaptive that are helping us with trail design, even on the other trails that go to the ledge, that uh, we're learning that if we widen them a little bit, there needs to have room for a guide to work uh, with the visually impaired person who's trying to get up to the uh, top of the ledge. So we're learning and uh, 
uh, we want it to to be a trail for all but also all are welcome yes and all are welcome all are play. welcome mm -hmm. we want to make that clear yeah so that kind of leads into the next question are there plans to change anything about the land like kind of like you were saying with the widening trails well one of the things that we're thinking about uh, if there's interest uh, in the, from the local community and people who want to work on it, uh, of looking at uh, uh, an area that we could do mountain for mountain biking, and uh, and so we have to figure out how where we would lay that out so that it doesn't interfere with the hiking trails or the trail for all uh, that uh, uh, it would be pretty much used exclusively for. Uh, for mountain biking. So if there's interest to do it and, and people uh, want to volunteer or work in that effort, we know of people that design those kinds of trails and they've done it for uh, inland uh, pathways and uh, are willing to help us if, if that's uh, if there's a desire. I know at least 10 people right off the top of my head that would that is wonderful. <laughs> well, good, good. Well, yeah. We have a lot of interest in mountain biking in the area. And of course, Mount Abram's not too far away. And that's become very popular there. Love it. Um, are you, what are you going to do about um, like the local youth? Like, are you going to um, work with schools or things like that to get them like involved with the forest and the trail and everything? Well, I think it's a great opportunity. One of the things is that trail that goes to the elementary school. We call it the forest school trail um, because we think that once you leave the school grounds and you get on that trail, you're entering uh, a learning opportunity about the forest. And I just, you know, we're just starting to scratch the surface. I know some schools down around the Portland area have created forest schools before. Northern Forest Center that's working with us with the planning has done a lot of educational things around the concept of a forest school. So it's something that we want to explore and learn more uh, about, about that opportunity. It's, a, it's like a blank canvas. If you want, you want to think about it that way, we get to paint what we want on this canvas. And so that's what we're looking for in those ideas is uh, what do you want? And I know, you know, once we articulate what it is we want, all of a sudden the brain works uh, overtime to take, take and get us from where we are now to where we want to be. So that's why we need your ideas and inspiration. And if we can capture, it, we'll be doing it, putting it into our planning uh, for future access and stuff of the of the property. So that kind of leads into the next question. Um, Great. What? might you want for artwork do you have ideas or suggestions for or something you envision like do you have a certain like prompt for it type thing yeah um this is this is very interesting for me to think about because every group has asked me this question which i i greatly appreciate and uh my response is uh, it's all about your personal experience in making, say we do tiles, play tiles, your personal experience, your message, what you love, is it part of a landscape or is it a symbol or, um, you know, it's, it's, it's deeply personal. And what I love about how that works is all these deeply personal pieces come together for an absolutely inspired whole. And, that, and then what we will do is we will make sure it's protected, it's, it's uh, framed the right way so that all can see it when they arrive at the, at the beginning of the trail and will be weather tight and will be there for a very long time. In fact, maybe, you know, years, uh, years pass and you might be taking your children there and you might be able to say, I did that when I was in eighth grade. So, uh, I, I mean, it's, it's going to be long lasting and I think it's, it will be meaningful for everybody who comes to Bucks. Exam an example of that is um, 
the Millennium Sculpture that's in Bethel, right beside the post office. And I don't know yeah. if you've noticed it before, but it's a piece of uh, uh, installation art that Leslie did with the Crescent Park Schools, started out as an artist and resident project, yeah. and then as a, the teacher, and they created this and had a sculptor, a metal smith, uh, work with their design a local, a local person to create that but it was asking the kids and this is in the year 2000 yes what did the they want for the future and it says then now and always and the one thing that they didn't want to see change was the ridge lines that the lid ridge lines would not have lots of uh, houses and structures and antennas and everything on top of them that it would be a beautiful as it was They're when clean. people first settled in the Bethel area and uh, the way it was at that time meaning now and then always that then that would it, people a hundred years from now would look the same way and making time count yes so uh there's a there's a lot in that very uh, simple sculpture that that has been poured into it on the front end a uh, lot of emotion a lot of caring a lot of looking at the future like you guys are going to be doing too so I you know I look at boxes and the work you're going to be doing to uh, add to that uh, as something that's going to be inspiring people for as long as it hey it's 2022 and it was done in 2000 so uh, it can be limitless Awesome. So we have about uh, five more minutes left of our interview portion before we go on to having you guys do the exit ticket. And so I just wanted to encourage you guys, if you haven't yet started with that last question, mm -hmm. let's get that one. And then if we still have some time left, you can come back to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, what did you want us to do to help with the project as a community, as schools, just mm -hmm. for help? Mm -hmm. Well, um, we start. We still are fundraising. If somebody is interested in that part of it, or their family want to support that, there's an opportunity. As you saw in the end of that video, there's a little QR code that's there that uh, can take you to a place with the donations. What you want to do, but there's going to be these volunteer opportunities. And then the other thing I encourage, because here we're in Woodstock, but you, some of you may be in Bethel and Greenwood. But all of the local towns have a what they call a cleanup day that we do on Earth Day on April 22nd or there or the Saturday, or, or the Saturday of that close to week, it. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. and and that's a roadside cleanup where we pick up plastic bottles and things that Cans, were carelessly thrown out a window and <clears throat> littered. Uh, we pick that up and take it to the dump and we get a lot of stuff. Unfortunately, we, you know, there's always a need. Uh, but it makes the area that we're at beautiful and uh, and protects the environment. And it's just a Saturday morning. Right. So, so. That, that's one of the things. And then uh, another thing that I mentioned, we also have uh, groups in Woodstock anyway, that look for invasive plants and invasive species. And we spend a couple of days uh, in the spring uh, when they're emerging. Uh, removing those invasive plants from the roadside, otherwise it would start to crowd out our native plants and start to lose habitat for the animals that depend upon the, uh, uh, the native plants. So uh, that's another project that we do. And we have milfoil, uh, that um, group that works with a group of professionals in removing um, milfoil mm -hmm. from our lakes and ponds, if there's any evidence of it. And we've mostly eradicated milfoil in our, in, in the town of Woodstock, there's an active project that goes on over uh, Shag Pond. And there's mm -hmm. a group over there that, uh, that uh, focus on that. So those are the, the efforts and places where people can volunteer and become part of it. Awesome. Uh, before we start to wrap it up, I just want to say thank you for putting all this hard work into something, like you said, that we can admire for like all of our life. I thank you for putting all this time and effort and money into this wonderful project so that so many people can enjoy. Well, thank you so much. And, and your, your questions your are, yes. are well thought out and meaningful. All and of you guys have done an amazing job and, and, uh, we have to make sure we're thinking quickly enough for you. 
<laughs> we're planning on capturing all of this and taking it back to the our Northern Forest Center meetings yes, that we have. Yes. On it's a monthly meeting where we're doing this kind of planning and use, and also being putting it into what we want to preserve. So it's all about getting people to think about what they want, and once they can express it, you know, whether it's in art or other ways, the more we can express what we want the better chances are we're going to get it, okay? Because oh, you start to focus on it and then, you know, it becomes like- It'll happen. It touches your heart and you happen. want to make sure it happens. And you know, so it's, it's crazy. It's just planting the thought or the feeling. It surprises me how many times that's happened in my life that it, it, it materializes. And you don't even think about that. That could be an interesting prompt like what do you want or what what do you want for the future of our area yes so I, I would like to say what do we all say to our guests thank you for thank you so much oh, thank, well, you. thank you we appreciate so, it what we're going to do right now friends is you're going to open up your laptops real quick and you have a pre session exit ticket to do and if you are interested in continuing the conversation with ed and leslie they'll be hanging out for a few more minutes before they go to lunch so Go ahead and do your exit ticket. And then if you want to talk to them a little bit longer, they'll be here, okay? okay. Guys, that was so good. I'm going to stop recording now. Um, we got